This, this is Smorgasbord. Smorgasbord. Welcome to Smorgasbord, a show where we explore the rituals, myths, and all things strange about the world of food. I'm Mick, and here's my co-host. Angel. And today we are covering the cures for the plague. The plague. It feels pretty grim to do this right now. I mean... Or is it a That's just time? us. <laughs> We're pretty grim <laughs> as people in general. Well, the plague was like a pandemic anyway. Yeah, just not this one. No. You mean, wait, which plague do you mean? We're going to be looking at the cures that they did for the the Black Plague. The Black oh, Death okay. Plague. The, the Black Death Plague. In the 1300s. Yeah, because people didn't shower. Yeah, all those things and <laughs> many more weird things. That it was a darker time back then. It was a very dark time. There were some similarities too with today. Yeah, it's actually one. Of, it was my favorite high school like history lesson. Was Medieval the times? Oh, the plague. The plague. Yeah, we had a whole we had a whole like week on it. Oh wow, it was interesting. Was it just the plague, or was it? All the plagues. No, we just talked about that plague and like what um, effects it had on the population and like the after effects of like right. how how many people died <laughs> and like right. what do you do with a society after that if like two out of three people you know are dead. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. What do you even do? I don't know. You just kind of chill because like <laughs> that's when the labor force was all like, yeah, you know what? I don't really want to labor. Yeah. They... <laughs> They ended like borderline slit. What did they call it? Feudalism. Feudalism. That's the word. Anyway, before we deep, deep dive into the world of medieval times, what when your palate? Oh, so I've been binge watching Squid Game while eating squid. <laughs> <laughs> what kind? Like just. Squid chips or um, the calamari? There, no, not calamari. I wish it was calamari, Ooh. but uh, your girl's broke. So <laughs> I got like the snack packs of like, I guess they're grilled, but they're really crispy. Oh, those the ones like, that are like round? Like no, they've been, they've been beaten into like a sheet. So it's like oh. a sheet of squid. <laughs> oh, I wish not- I knew what they're called, but I can't read the wrapper. I think it's in Korean. I just know it's squid because there's a picture of a squid on it. (laughs) It's actually their mascot. (laughs) It could be anything else. It's like, actually, this is buffalo. (laughs) (laughs) Like regular white plain cracker. (laughs) No, it's pretty squiddy. But it's also spicy. Yeah, it's really good. I wish I saved the wrapper. Did it taste similar to the... Have you tried the Lay's grilled squid one? I think that was from either China or Japan. Mm, no, I haven't. It's in the wavy Lay's and then it, it's grilled squid flavor and it tastes pretty close to shrimp too. Okay, but why would you eat squid flavored potato when you can just eat squid flavored squid? <laughs> <laughs> just I didn't a, think of that just part. A thought. <laughs> <laughs> it went way over my head. <laughs> These are the questions that I am here for. <laughs> to ask, the, not to answer. <laughs> the magical squid potato. master. <laughs> it's like a it's like a potato cosplaying a squid. This is squid true. <laughs> <laughs> for your mouth. Yes. But no, I was not eating the potato variety. It was the, the squid. The squid kind. Mm, well, you yeah. wouldn't. You still were. It's still up in the air if it was the real squid kind. Was it is? Could just be a squid mascot still too. I mean, it could. Was be. that squid holding a potato? <laughs> <laughs> if a squid was wearing a potato costume, I probably wouldn't eat it. <laughs> that squid flavored potato? potato? No, That's potato a, flavored, flavored squid? squid. Yeah. No thanks. Oh. That sounds very bland. Though that's kind of like. If you bread it with, if you bread squid with potato and then fry it, wouldn't it also be like calamari-ish? That'd be like, yeah, I guess so. Potato mm-hmm. breaded calamari. Yeah. I'd buy, I'd, I'd buy that. Maybe, maybe I'll eat that one. 
Yeah. I'll eat that version. The potato will be so crunchy. It just it will just feel like um, flour. Not potato. Not potato. <laughs> Not potato. <laughs> flour. Flour crunchies. Flour crunchies. Mm. Yeah. Well, I've been home alone today, and I decided to cook like a kilo of pork chops. <laughs> Oh my god. Wow, that's a lot of pork chops. Or is it, a, maybe it was less. I I ate like four slices of pork chop today. Mm-mm. How lunch. big are these slices? Pork chop sized? <laughs> pork chops? I don't know. I feel like pork chop uh, comes in many shapes. In many the size sizes. of my phone, I guess. Oh, okay. And you have an iPhone of some yeah. sort. <laughs> the bigger iPhone. iPhone 11, I think. Mm. Uh, yeah, I did that with. I also made too much rice. <laughs> so it was just, a big meal. You just ate. <laughs> I was That's telling why you, you're it sleepy. was like it was a solid two-hour experience of cooking and eating, or just eating. Just eating. Oh. <laughs> you eat a little bit, and then you just rest. Yeah. And then you eat a little bit more. I think I was watching some like food YouTuber as I was eating it. Nothing so. like watching food while you consume food. Yeah, you gotta. You gotta I just like, watch people get murdered. So. <laughs> I was gonna say you gotta watch the thing you want to do. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was just it's straight up murder. That show was great. <laughs> what show is it? Oh, is it the Squid, Squid Game? Game? Yeah. <laughs> well, speaking of the sea and murder. <laughs> Speaking of people dying. Yeah, that, that one. We're going to do the plague. So we'll do like, I guess, a brief history of the plague. I never had covered it in school. So this is my, I guess, 33-year-old school research project. And then we'll go into the um, the cures for the plague. What worked and what didn't. Uh, I can spoilers. tell you showering probably worked, but I'm pretty sure they didn't do it. <laughs> Yeah, I think they were suggested not to shower <laughs> for actually interesting reasons that now it really doesn't make sense. <laughs> so the plague that we're talking about, as we mentioned, was the one that happened in the 1300s or the mid 1300s. It was a good time. 1347 to 1353. I heard they had good raves back then. Mm-hmm, um, mm-hmm. Back then it was called the pestilence or the great mortality. The name that we know as of it today is the the Black Death. That term was actually coined much later, so more closer to our times. The change of name, I'm not sure why they changed the name, but the change it's of name catchy. signified, yeah, it's catchy. It's true. It's very metal. <laughs> <laughs> like it's some kind Sounds of metal like a scientist. Black metal band. Maybe Death he was, metal. it was the guy who discovered its promotional material. <laughs> or promote my metal band with this metal plague it's pretty it has an aesthetic yeah if you look at the woodcuts and like the artwork it's pretty grim black death mm-hmm. yeah it's just like skeletons oh dead yeah dead people and like plague doctors the ones with the the nosy thing the nose thing yeah 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 it sounds about <laughs> sounds about right for this time the reason they actually called it the Black Death was because one of the key symptoms back then was the prevalence of little black spots or buboes that appear in the um, people who are the plague victims, as he could call them. But the plague actually that we know of today, mostly we talk about what happened in Europe for it, but the plague itself actually originated from Asia. From Where people shower. China, yeah. <laughs> Um, the reason why that change happened was apparently there was a rapid climate change that happened in Asia that dried out the glass grasslands and moved all the rodents into populated areas. And here the rodents brought the plague with them. I think it was prevalent in Asia before the 1340s, but then in October of 1347, the plague itself arrived in Europe it arrived in Sicily first in the port of Messina where 12 ships arrived and when they got into the ships they saw that most people were dead um, with black spots on them 
that had blood and pus and all of that Ugh. good stuff coming out of the- I would have just pushed that boat right out of the, out of the harbor and just like yeah <laughs> well that's what they tried to do um so this is they they did think it was kind of suspect and dangerous so they sent the ships back out in the harbor but I guess the news didn't travel fast enough and at that point the plague already has spread to the locals there I'm guessing too it's like a bunch of bacteria that's been like germinating in the ships for months of travel Mm-mm. from if, especially if it came from Asia yeah <laughs> the reason the plague reached the ships though go interestingly <laughs> from a dispute between the Mongols and the Italians mm-hmm. so from there the plague moved into the ships and then spread over Europe so in 1343, in a town of Tana, which is a Crimean town under the Italian rule, an Italian allegedly killed a Mongol one day. Uh, the news reached the Mongol leader Khan Janibek, who then in retaliation invaded the town. They took over the town and then tried to chase the people into the city of Kaffa. And unfortunately, this is the time when the Mongols actually got sick with the plague. So I guess they were sick with the plague or they contracted the plague at some point during this (laughs) dispute and then they started getting sick which meant they started all dying all of a sudden my guess is that they got sick because of the the unsanitary conditions of war so they're probably in their tents and a bunch of rats spread it to them yeah it's just a bunch of sweaty dudes yeah camping in a tent (laughs) sharing the same towel (laughs) yeah (laughs) if they even had a towel yeah (laughs) We keep our hair dry because it's our natural toe. <laughs> yeah. But despite um, the people of Kaffa seeming to have gotten some divine intervention of having the Mongols die on them, before all the Mongols died, they used the bodies of their dead comrades and shot it over by catapult into the town. <laughs> Which then got the people there sick, and then the people there started to flee the town because of everyone getting sick, and they got into their ships and spread that all the way to Europe. Nice. Yeah. By the end of it, apparently it killed 30 million people in Europe, which is 30 to 50% of the European population back then. Yeah, I didn't even know there was that many people back then, honestly. Yeah. And the one thing that we might not remember usually with because of western history classes is that because it originated from asia it also probably killed more or just as many if not more people in asia as well because i think asia was more populated back then than europe yeah um the cause of the plague is caused by a bacteria called yersinia pestis or why pestis (laughs) i don't know why it's a funny name (laughs) Why pestis? Why? Why? <laughs> these are most prevalent in fleas. So, and these fleas tend to inhabit the skins of rodents or rats. Back then, they didn't know that bacteria could do that. So, the medieval belief for the causes were. Didn't they think it was Jewish people? <laughs> yep. <laughs> At some point, they thought it was the Jewish oh, people. Racism. <laughs> Uh, they thought it was the wrath of God or work of the devil. They said might be just the planetary alignment. So what, did, I mean, what is Mercury's in retrograde? So we get the plague. <laughs> you know, Mercury goes into retrograde three times a year. So. so they get the plague three times a year. <laughs> yeah. Good bonus. Here's a bonus plague. <laughs> You're welcome. <laughs> They also had potential thoughts that it was vampires or bad air or some evil suggested, some people even suggested that it could be just an imbalance in your body. Mm. Yeah, it's just not I mean, feeling right like... right now. I'm just getting black spots all over me. It's just an imbalance. I'm just like drinking water. <laughs> maybe, maybe some soap. Eating the soap or using the soap? Well, just using it. Yeah, even. no. No deal. <laughs> <laughs> oh, damn. <laughs> the plague itself was so devastating that it pretty much changed everything about the world. So in Europe, the pretty much ended the medieval period and brought upon the Renaissance in Europe. It 
I think you mentioned this a while ago, it ended the feudal system and brought upon wages to pay people. <laughs> yeah. Paying um, people instead of them plowing day and night just to yeah. plow some more. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It's not Harvest Moon. <laughs> it's um, way less fun. Yeah, way less fun, Harvest Moon. <laughs> Um, women took on bigger roles since many men died, so they left a lot of single ladies or single mothers. Um, the Catholic Church also lost its hold in the world, and that's during the same time was the rise of Protestantism. So you lose Jesus to get another Jesus? Huh. I don't know the. I actually don't know the difference between <laughs> Protestant and Catholic. All I know is in Catholic, it's the crucifix as the symbol of Jesus. So mm -hmm. it's like with the with the dude or Jesus stuck on the cross, mm -hmm. and then Protestants, it's just the cross for like oh, symbolism. Okay. okay, that's all I remember about that. The plague itself can cause three different things in a human being. So when you get the plague, it actually might not be the same result every time. <laughs> the difference is results may vary <laughs> yeah, results may vary this plague is highly dangerous results may vary can cause <laughs> nausea heartburn um, oh, lack of be like, sexual like, oh, appetite I wanted to get the bubos yeah. <laughs> all I got was death <laughs> um, yeah with the way it varies in your body depends on how the or where I guess the bacteria goes in your body there are three types of variants when it comes to the plague. So there's the bubonic, the pneumonic, and the septicemic. I've never heard septicemic. of the last one. It doesn't seem to be that common, but it is the most dangerous of the three of them. Hmm. The plague of the Black Death plague, I think was also known as the bubonic plague. So you could guess what variant dominated this plague which was the bubonic and the pneumonic variant, but it was mostly a bubonic plague mm -hmm. during Black Death. The term bubonic refers to the main symptom of this plague, which causes really your lymph nasty. nodes to swell, which are called buboes. <laughs> so gross. <laughs> That's a cute name to it, buboes. Yeah, kind of like boba. Oh yeah, a less appetizing boba. <laughs> you want some buboes, buboes. tea? <laughs> <laughs> Which is funny because they're both black round things. Yeah, except one comes out of your armpit. Yeah. <laughs> um, these buboes usually form in the neck, armpits, or groin area and are known to ooze pus and blood. Ugh. Yeah, that is like boba. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what kind of boba you've been having. Well, because they get like squishy they do get and squishy. sticky. There are ones that like, have you gotten popping boba before? Yes. Yeah. That's the one from like, like Froyo that. places, right? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I love those. <laughs> those are more buboes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so what comes out of your armpit is definitely boba. not mango flavor. <laughs> yeah. It's just pus. It's just pus. Sorry. <laughs> yeah. Once they get to your bodies, they also spread and multiply all around your body after that. The blackness that you get from the bubonic plague comes from the skin and the damage of the swelling and oozing. Mm -hmm. So you just pretty much get so beat up that it starts turning black. Um, the bubonic plague spreads to people through fleas or rodents only. It doesn't actually spread from person to person, which is really interesting. Oh, so there's um, a lot of fleas. Yeah. Like a lot. Well, I think there's a rodent problem. And then if every person got in touch with that rodent, then... It would spread or something. I, I'm sure you could get it from person to person, but like in a way, it doesn't always, I guess. But mm -hmm. it, it seems to more come from fleas and rodents. I didn't. I couldn't find anything about why it didn't spread from person to person. Because the other strain does. Yeah, the other ones do or can. But I'm guessing maybe the way it arrives to you. So if you got, because the other ones are still the same. Like if you get it from a person, it's going to be one of the different variants. Because it'll right. affect a different part of your body instead. Mm. So maybe it's how it enters your body or I don't know. So the, an example of it would be if the bacteria infests a flea and a rodent and then it transfers to humans either by the fleas landing on humans 
Mm-hmm. Or you interacting with the rodents, or if the bacteria runs out of unhealthy rodents to infest, then it'll start infesting people. That's how it started spreading. So I think they ran out of. It killed all the rats. <laughs> it killed all the rats. Oh god. So, if you want to get rid of your rat problem at home, use the bubonic plague. <laughs> yeah, but then you get the plague too. Yeah. Oh. Um, so, so aside from there's the, no winning. <laughs> no, there really isn't. <laughs> Side effects come with fevers, chills, headaches, aching joints, nausea, vomiting, internal bleeding. Um, mm, and, internal bleeding? <laughs> and your garden variety boobos. <laughs> Not the mango now variety. coming in 25 pack. <laughs> Are you getting your boobos from Costco? Yeah, <laughs> yeah of course. Mm-mm. You, gotta, you gotta pop these 25 at a time or it's not worth it. <laughs> bulk pack yeah one other sign that you may have the plague is if you have freckle like spots in your arms or your body because those are usually flea bites so if the flea had the bacteria with it and it bit you you would contract this dude you wouldn't know if you have flea bites i got flea bites from an airbnb once and it was the worst Ooh. experience of my life does it get They're itchy so itchy oh. so itchy i still have Ugh. scars from them from scratching no, they the like bite. left the bites themselves, oh, the scars. That's intense. So I guess it's good that you just got scars instead of internal bleeding. <laughs> <laughs> and boobers. Dude, if I get the plague from Portland, Oregon, I would not be surprised. In Portland. <laughs> in Portland. Is the beer? Um, oh, it was in Portland. Yeah. <laughs> Those damn hippies making yeah, up bubonic no. plagues. I know, fuck. Hipsters can't trust them. All right. And their craft beer and their bubonic plague. <laughs> <laughs> when it comes to its fatality rate, it's about thirty to seventy-five percent, which I guess isn't, that's why people survived. You could most people live for about a week. So after a week, if you're still alive, you're Once probably you good. Ah, oh. what's the survival rate? Uh, thirty to seventy-five percent fatality. So mm. whatever the other math is. <laughs> yeah. 70 to 25% survival. Not very good odds. No, say. not really. <laughs> I don't think so either. The other variant of the plague is the pneumonic plague. So different from the bubonic, this one happens when the bacteria enters your lungs instead of it reaching your lymph nodes. So I think when the bacteria enters your body, it kind of chooses where to go. <laughs> Wherever it goes, you get one of these three variants. Yeah. <laughs> Yay! Like, Which one word. will it be today? <laughs> <laughs> Uh, this one you could contract through the air. So this one passes from person to person mm, through cough or sneeze do- droplets. Yeah. Air. So if you, I guess, inhale it, it goes straight to your lungs. So it'll likely infest yum, yum. your lungs first. Meanwhile, when you get bit, it goes through your skin first, which is probably why it affects your lymph nodes. Oh, that kind of makes sense. <laughs> science. Science. <laughs> imagine if people trusted science more often. Oh, Imagine. Match. Symptoms for this is fever and blood. While well, your cough starts spitting out blood, it progressively turns from light to bright red due to the rising amount of blood. You'll start coughing up, so it just nice. gets worse. That's why it's like, <laughs> that's why your cough is getting darker. It's like your lungs are eating itself from the inside. Yeah, between the pneumonic and the bubonic, you definitely don't want to get the pneumonic. Its fatality rate is 90 to 95%. So Ooh. 5 to 10% survival. <laughs> I don't know why I just laughed. <laughs> that's a, yeah, GG. <laughs> yeah, Next that's us. See ya. As soon as you get it, you know. Yep. Like, the last variant, the most dangerous one, is the septic iemic. This one is when it infects your blood. This one you get through insect or flea bites. Um, the symptoms of this is high fever and... Disseminated intravascular coagulation, which is medical speak for blood clotting. Oh, yeah, essentially you're dead. a mm. lot of blood clotting. Um, it ends up causing purple skin patches in your skin because your blood's just getting stuck. <laughs> when that happens, you're you're dead. Yeah, compared to the other two that have boobos coming with them, 
both the mnemonic and the bubonic. The septicaemic actually rarely has any bubos, and the main reason is it kills you so fast you won't have time. <laughs> you don't have time to brew one. <laughs> you, yeah, you can't you can't pass by your local bubos tea shop and get one before you tea. get your playing. <laughs> no bubo um, tea for you. Yeah, see, I've never heard of the third one. Yeah. I've only heard of the first two. Well, it's good that it's not as popular because <laughs> there is still no cure for this one. And its fatality yeah. rate is pretty much 100%. Mm. <laughs> it's an insta-kill, <laughs> folks. <laughs> See, when, um, and I know this from playing Plague Inc., <laughs> if you make the fatality rate too high, then you don't have a chance to spread. Spread. So that's probably uh, why you don't mm -hmm. hear it, or it's not as common as, like, you get it, you did. Yeah. It's too fast. You gotta, yeah. like, you gotta calm down a little bit. Yeah. You gotta have an incubation period. Exactly. People don't know you're there. Or you're secretly having babies. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you don't want that. Yeah. But yeah, that's why I think it doesn't spread from people to people. Because you have to either get bitten by it or inhale it. And unless it's in mm. the person's lungs and they cough it to you, you're not going to get it from another person. The Your skin actually protects you from this bacteria. It's yes. if ever the, you contract this plague, if it can get into your body and what it seems like yes and the fleas can yeah gnawing how many teeth do fleas have i don't want to know <laughs> i just want them dead how many eyes <laughs> they're awful four noses they they jump they jump real far yeah i watched the bug's life oh <laughs> i will never watch that i hate insects so much oh yeah you hate that one for sure like um, they're not cute. They're just... I just want to burn them all. <laughs> <laughs> I wonder when you burn them, they also jump high. <laughs> <laughs> they do. It's like popcorn. Ew. But like... Little flea popcorn. Guts. Yeah. Yuck. So we have some plague facts also, or some plague stories that we could share with you during this time. During the plague, there were actually stories of people just avoiding the sick altogether. This includes doctors who didn't want to see patients, priests who didn't want to do the last rites, and a bunch of stores who just didn't want to open service. The stores one I understand, but isn't it kind of the doctor or priest's job? Or like part of their commitment or whatever? Mm, yeah, funny how things change when your life is on the line. Yeah, it's very Survival true. Survival instinct kicks in. Fair enough, very true. Plague also affected animals, including sheep. Which apparently oh. caused the European wool shortage. Oh. <laughs> Damn. Damn, that's almost as bad as the potato famine. Yeah. Or the the empty lambrax. <laughs> the um, empty racks of no lamb. <laughs> yep. It was a lamb freeze winter that year. <laughs> but we have all these potatoes. <laughs> it's okay. <laughs> we dip them in the squid down by the sea. <laughs> squid don't. Squid can't get plague. Or can they? I probably can. I don't know. Pretty sure anything can get some kind of plague. Yeah, the plague itself also killed half the people of Siena, which halted the creation of what would have been the largest cathedral, which is the Siena Gothic Cathedral. Apparently, a part of this cathedral still exists today, and it's just never was made because they just ran out of people to do it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> in a monastery in Montreal, Gerardo, or in Montreal, Montreal? It's French. Montreux? Montreux, maybe. Yeah, Montreux. I don't know, I'm guessing. <laughs> Gerardo, who was a monk, and his dog were the lone survivors of the monastery. Oh my God, is he Will Smith? Yeah, I guess so. <laughs> Will Smith, but he buried the dead after. <laughs> so, I don't know how he didn't get the plague. He buried all his friends. Or maybe he's like the 1% survivor. Yeah. Lucky guy. Yeah. In most cities, bodies were piled up that they were just pretty much balls of bodies. Mm -hmm. And that caused the plague to spread even more. <laughs> Apparently, close distance spreads plagues. <laughs> Who Close known? distance to rotting things. Never have known that in 2019. <laughs> the 
The classic Plague Doctor look also originated from this plague. So that's the one with the bird-like mask. So the reason that yeah. they had that bird-like mask was because in the beak, they put very strong smelling things like flowers or herbs or vinegar sponge or spices or something so you don't have to oh, smell right. all the death around you <laughs> oh yeah finally boobos don't smell good no i heard how awful it smells once it bursts is it like mm. burning hair or really mushy pus <laughs> i mean i don't know what pus smells like and i hope hopefully we'll never know <laughs> Yeah, let's hope so too. They also had a long overcoat and that was just to protect themselves from the dying. Uh, I and they also it was had for a cane. Style. <laughs> <laughs> that the cane and the long coat just fits the uh, the beak. See aesthetic. Yeah. Um, the cane apparently was used as a poker. Like to try to keep people away <laughs> or point at thing, point at the oh. dead parts. I thought it's to like make sure people are dead. We poke. <laughs> yeah, we that poke. too. <laughs> it pretty much acted as their hand or their right. arm. Yeah. Because then that way they don't get sick because the poker gets sick. You think they wash their sticks? <laughs> oh, probably. Using the same towels. <laughs> yeah. uh, Nostradamus apparently is one of the first played doctors. He sounds oh. familiar. He's um he's this guy that made like prophecies. Ah, right. So he was a plague doctor. Oh, I didn't know that. I don't know what else he did. (laughs) He made predictions, that's all I know. Did he guess right? (laughs) I don't know if he predicted the plague. Predictions. (laughs) Yeah. He he's like, I've been waiting to wear this suit. (laughs) (laughs) I've had it made for years. (laughs) (laughs) I was a few years short or off on my (laughs) prediction. Like I've been polishing my stick. Ready for some corpse poking. It's extra grippy. <laughs> medicine back then was, as you could tell, very different from medicine today. A lot of the beliefs back then were grounded in fiction or philosophy, theology, rather than science. Not to discredit the intelligence of philosophy or whatever, but it's just not science. <laughs> it's just not the same thing. <laughs> yeah. I think, therefore, I'm not sick wasn't a thing. Yeah, you can't manifest no plague. Yeah. (laughs) It's already here. (laughs) But if I think really hard, (laughs) if I don't see the plague, it doesn't exist. If I don't see the plague, the plague can't see me. Exactly. (laughs) You can see some things haven't changed in 700 years. Oh, no, not at all. Back then, the predominant European medicine belief was the theory of humors. So as there were for four elements, earth, water, air, and fire, they were linked to four bodily fluids known as the humors. Black bile as earth, phlegm as water, blood as air, and yellow bile as fire. Mm-hmm. I wonder if this is based on their taste. I have a lot of, um, I have an excess of water. <laughs> I'm very <laughs> allergic to a lot of things. <laughs> like black bile? No, isn't that just like mucus? I think phlegm is mucus. No, yellow bile phlegm? is mucus? No, the clear nose snot kind. Ah. Yeah, bi- bile uh, just sounds like... Yeah. Oh, I'm thinking of dial, the soap. Dial? <laughs> okay, not quite. Like, bile sounds like soap. <laughs> No, bile is gross. Also, in order sure. for your bile to be visible, you gotta be pretty sick, I guess. Yeah, because right. you gotta like. <laughs> Ew. So it doesn't come from your wherever phlegm comes from. No, it comes from liver. I wish I wish I knew. Remember what organ it was. I think it's. But liver. it comes from like one place in your body. The larynx. No. <laughs> no. <Definitely not. laughs> Down lower. Yeah. <laughs> well, gallbladder. Gallbladder. It comes from the gallbladder. Ah, yes. The good old gallbladder. I can't believe I just like remembered 10th grade science. <laughs> Yay, science. Yay, science. See, learned it in science class. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Go to school, kids. 
I got such a bad grade in science, too. <laughs> don't go to school, kids. <laughs> no, go to school, but don't be like me. <laughs> Listen, I had science class, like, right after lunch. Oh, dear. And, I, and it's like, after you, I just get, like, lunch naps. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you get it, right? Peach. Yeah. It's just, so it's just it's a, a miracle naps. that I remembered anything from it. Well, I was asleep for most of high school, so I'm yeah, surprised I, was, I remember anything at all. <laughs> I was, yeah, I was asleep from only science class. <laughs> Each of these humors also come with a, aside from the attribute to the elements, were also attributed a color, taste, a temperament, and even a season of the year. You know, that black bile, just mm. much lazier than that yellow bile. <laughs> Is it laziness? Is black bile lazy? Yeah, that's like, what they said. Wise? Black bile, yeah. Phlegm, mm. just always grumpy. <laughs> <laughs> Are you naming the seven dwarfs? Super, <laughs> super fall. <laughs> Yellow bile's a little more summery. Mm. Just, I don't know why they really this. That's apparently how they this understood medicine and mm. science back then. Mm. So, as you could tell, very, uh, Scientific. Wait, which one's blood again? Air. Air. Yeah. No, they're all liquid. Like, <laughs> <laughs> right? They're all water. <laughs> Maybe it's like blood is water with a hint of air. Mm, less so, like a remember. soda? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. So that was the general belief back then. There were also other beliefs in like astrological alignments or supernatural powers. Mm. Those were like what could be the basis of medicine back then. So as you could tell, they tried to make cures with that kind of medicinal belief. And I guess we should start with the cures that didn't work. <laughs> like all of them. Because <laughs> spoilers, there, was, <laughs> there, was, there wasn't a cure that worked. <laughs> There's one method of preventing it, but no cure. Mm -hmm. So they were never able to find a proper cure, as we mentioned, because their medicine was very misinformed or misunderstood. Uh, so when it comes to the cures that didn't work, uh, I guess we'll start with the animal-based cures, because we're kind of a food podcast. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um the most popular cure back then was the Vicari method. Have you ever heard of this? No. Founded by the English doctor Thomas Vicari, this method requires you to pluck the backside of the chicken clean. Like while it's alive? Yes, while it's alive. Okay. And then strap that chicken. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, I need you to finish that sentence. <laughs> so you pluck the backside of the chicken. And then... I can't say it. <laughs> so after that, you strap the whole chicken into... <laughs> into the boobos <laughs> how does it even work can you imagine somebody like just with like some string alright alright come over get over here you have like a naked chick oh well that's gonna hurt too I don't know who it hurts more like the guy with the boobos or, or the actual chicken <laughs> <laughs> Imagine if he had ten boobos. <laughs> Chickens all over your body. <laughs> wow, the visuals. All right, let's try this again. So it was founded by an English doctor, Thomas Vicari. Um, this method requires you to pluck the backside of the chicken clean and then strap that whole chicken onto the swollen nodes of the sick. In yeah. other words, it has to get strapped into the boobos. Mm. sites I have no idea it looks it sounds so silly <laughs> it sounds <laughs> all I picture is just like a dude with 10 a chickens guy with chicken. <laughs> it's not a chicken suit it's like I thought I could fly if I just put chickens on me 
Oh, this I don't even a, have boobos on me. This is a couture boobos. Chicken, chicken couture. <laughs> <laughs> that, my friends, is how chicken noodle soup was invented. <laughs> so the reason they thought this worked was because, according to Vicari, he believed that if the chicken started getting sick, it's because it was absorbing a disease from the person. After it would start getting sick, you'd remove the chicken, wash it clean, and then strap it right back. Oh. Oh. And it's rinse and repeat until either the person dies or the chicken dies. I feel like the chicken just dying just because it's tied yeah. to a person. Well, yeah. Like, imagine like a pussing boobos right into the backside of a chicken like that a thing's gonna pick up chicken yeah <laughs> a chicken's gonna pick up that boobo that boobo's <laughs> juice really fast Ew. what's interesting is i found this i can't remember what website i was reading but apparently some surgery organization still celebrates this guy the the doctor uh, maybe he accomplished maybe he had other achievements or discovered other things but maybe these people really hate chickens <laughs> <laughs> they really thought it worked. Yeah. I think what actually happened was it was if the chicken got sick, then you just infected. That's how that's how the plague spreads. That's how it works. Sure. So if anyone got COVID, don't worry, I'll buy you a tub of chicken nuggets. Yeah. And we'll staple it to your face. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe that will put some out of it. <laughs> yeah. Maybe that's how you got sick. You tried to put a chicken nuggets mask. <laughs> and before you even left the building, it was all gone. Uh, there is no mask. There is only remnants of nugget. Yeah. I still have the chicken bits. Does that cover anything? <laughs> when it comes to other animal related cures, another one was chopping up a snake and then rubbing those snake bits into your boobos. Oh. A uh, big reason why they believe this worked was because, or since the snake is a symbol of Satan in most of Europe, so they could use the snake then to draw the evil away from the sick. Right. You know what else does that? A sponge. <laughs> <laughs> is that, and was it, what was the one that Trump suggested? Clorox or? <clears throat> Clorox. Oh yeah, like bleach. Bleaching He's your like, throats. Just saying. You never just know. Just saying. <laughs> Uh, other beliefs similar to that was also pigeon or onions and herbs. So rubbing those into your body. I'm not sure why pigeon. Maybe it's a symbol of Satan's wife? Because they're close enough to chickens. <laughs> Wait. <laughs> Once you start running out of chickens. <laughs> you started with you the pigeons, use pigeons next. <laughs> Then the seagulls, then the ravens. <laughs> any, any bird. Yeah. When it comes to other animals, ingesting the snake skin also actually was a thing. Or you could also ingest bones from a stag horn. It's a stag horn. Like a oh, big, like a male a, deer. Like I think. a deer. Okay. Yeah. Another popular animal cure was ground up unicorn horns, are also thought right. to be very effective. Oh no, they're coming from the horn. Oh, there you go. <laughs> Angel is wearing a unicorn hat, <laughs> and she has been the whole episode. That's why I am immune as fuck. Yeah, she doesn't wear a mask anymore. No, just this is all you need. Yeah. Right here. That's how you, it's your vaccinator. <laughs> yes, I, I stabbed myself with this guy. <laughs> Insecure. The problem is it's quite expensive because it's also very hard to get unicorns horns. Yeah, considering how they don't exist. <laughs> yeah. But apparently you also needed a virgin maiden as bait. To bait out a unicorn before you oh, even course. catch it. So, of course, because horses are really into chicks. <laughs> yeah. What is it with virgin people? Wasn't it, what was the other? Oh, to find out if there's like a spirit or a vampire in the graveyard, oh, right. you <laughs> get a virgin boy to ride a horse. Uh, I, yeah. Weird. <laughs> Weird. Weird. There were also, aside from animal cures, there were a bunch of other cures as well. <laughs> One of it was bloodletting, so bloodletting with leeches was a common uh, one. You they old leeches, that, the fix-all. Yeah, they believe that it will suck the bacteria out of you. These were super expensive though, because it was a profession back then to be a bloodletter. So you're just a dude with a box of leeches. <laughs> it's like, I'm here. <laughs> yeah. 
<laughs> the leech is at your service. <laughs> Um, the collected blood from those from the leeches were disposed, but the whole process was quite expensive, apparently. So another method that most people who didn't have money used was cupping. Oh, gross. People still Where you do heat that. up a cup and apply it on your skin, so the idea was that the heat will absorb the bubos. Into It'll the cup. absorb something. <laughs> <laughs> Pain. Actually, it will emit a lot of pain. You will observe yes. the pain. Yeah. <laughs> One popular potion was the Four Thieves Vinegar, which is cider vinegar or wine with spices like sage, clove, rosemary, wormwood, etc., etc. Et the reason why it's called Four Thieves Vinegar was that because there was a gang of four thieves who would drink this potion before they robbed the homes and the graves of the dead. And they claim that it was how they were able to go through these homes without catching the plague from these homes. What's interesting about this, although it might not work as a plague cure, it actually is still used as an antibacterial agent until now. Yeah, so maybe they were on to something. Yeah, it cleans stuff. Maybe not. That's why this is the reason why some cleaners may clean it on the surface, but drinking it won't actually... <laughs> What do you mean? <laughs> yeah. Also for the rich, if you're really rich, crushed emeralds were said to be a good cure all for or a cure, a good cure for the plague. And then you're just gonna be emeraldless and dead. Yeah. But at least you got I guess the way the same way we have gold doused food, this one was crushing it and putting it into the foods for you to eat. Uh, for the poor, you have your garden variety emeralds. No, you actually have arsenic or mercury. <laughs> <laughs> that was what the poor believed mm -mm. would be the replacement of emeralds. So they didn't die of the plague. They died from poisoning themselves. Cool. Yeah. It's like the boomers and the horse tranquilizers. Exactly. <laughs> Pretty much. Another concoction by the rich was a theriac which is a combination of a lot of different ingredients. That's as far as, as much as like 50 ingredients. But one of the key ingredients that's there is lots of opium. I mean, sure. <laughs> <laughs> its liquid version is treacle, but apparently only a 10 year old treacle is effective. Uh, the treacle is a rather sweet syrup like substance. It's now used more for a general term for sticky dark liquids. Like molasses is, I guess, considered a triacle at this point. Mm. One possible reason that the 10 year triacle may have worked potentially was because after 10 years, it probably developed a whole ecosystem of <laughs> molds, yeasts, and bacteria that can probably fight the Y pestis off your body. <laughs> That's a theory, at least. Um, aside from consuming it, you could also use it as a paste or a cream for your ugly looking buboes in your mm. skin. Other mix mixtures were drinking straight vinegar, using tree resin, roots of white lilies. There was also another concoction that required ground roasted eggshells, marigold flowers, treacle, and a warm beer. <laughs> warm beer is painful enough, thank you. Yeah, that's awful. Aside from these potions and whatnot, another way of they thought was a good cure was fumigating you. So because there was this like, belief that the plague was, because it felt like the plague was spread by air, which it, part of it does, people thought that it was caused by bad air. So they thought that fumigating with incense or burning thatch could clean or cleanse you. Let me guess, it didn't work. No, <laughs> really didn't. Some just also used bouquets of flowers in terms of smell. And you just put it in front of your face to prevent yourself from getting the plague. So it's kind of using a bouquet of flowers for the smell, but also as a mask. <laughs> a mask, yeah. Did you know spraying Febreze into your nose? Yeah. Is a cure? <laughs> yeah. Mm. Or apparently, as long as you don't smell the plague, you're not going to be sick. <laughs> yeah. <from the> plague. <laughs> if I don't smell it, then it's not there. Some would, instead of keeping it in your face, or just keep it in your pockets. So kind of using it as a totem. Or like, just a, as long as you smell good, you're fine. <laughs> this what? is apparently where the song Ring Around the Rosie. Yes, I do originated know that. from. Pockets and full of posies. 
Ashes, ashes, they all fall down, yeah. as in we're burning all the bodies. Loosely up. <laughs> <laughs> it was dark. It was a dark time. It was a very dark time. <laughs> Another way of fumigating was just actually just doing a sauna, so hanging up by a hot fire, so sweating it out. Hmm. Some thought that sitting by an open sewer can help, because then the bad air will absorb your bad air. <laughs> Yeah, the bad air will just fight it out, dig yeah. it out, and, and you slowly sneak away <laughs> when they're fighting. Like, I want, I want the plague. No, I want the plague. <laughs> um, in relation to, I guess, smells and all that, bathing was actually discouraged back this t- during this time. Knew it. <laughs> and the main reason for it is because it, they believed that it opened up your pores, which meant you were more susceptible to infection. Yikes. <laughs> and also because bathing apparently was disrespectful to the gods for some people. The gods of B.O.? <laughs> <laughs> You'd think, right? It was because they thought that the gods were punishing them with the plague, so trying to wash it off would be disrespectful. So you should just accept the plague? Yes. Okay. That's special. Yeah. Uh, related to that, <laughs> washing or fumigating money or documents was also common practice. So don't just fumigate you. Fumigate your <laughs> possessions too. I feel like they got the right idea there. They just yeah. didn't do it in a way that makes sense. <laughs> right. Yeah. Maybe. They you tried. Sanitize surfaces and things that change hands. True, yeah. But too bad incense smoke doesn't kill nope. plague. <laughs> Maybe if they use those four thieves vinegar thing, it might work. Maybe if they, yeah. you know, made incense out of chickens. <laughs> and then put the incense in your boobos. It's a little birthday candle to yourself. Just like Celebrate. waft it. Just yeah. like waft it into. <laughs> Speaking of really strange and gross cures, there were also some really gross ones. Ooh. So if you're squeamish, keep listening. Yeah. One of it was they thought... I guess this is like that that stupid shit that those Calgary people are doing. Herd immunity kind of idea. Oh, they're having like a chicken pox party. Yeah. So this one was drinking the pus of the boobos. You can't <laughs> beat him. Join him. Wow. That's nasty. So I believe that one was guaranteed infection. <laughs> yeah. Guaranteed death. <laughs> Um, human waste or excrement was also used as a paste to apply on your boobos. Some oh. even say drinking or eating it. No. Yes, drink or eat, because we're talking about both excrements. Mm. The idea was, I guess maybe not eating. Or was, okay, well, the, <laughs> the, the liquid one they it. definitely <laughs> drank. The oh. other one, maybe just as paste. The idea of the paste was the bad should move to the bad again. That, that, that was a very common belief back then. Fighting fire with fire. Yeah. It's like when you say Jeruma. Yeah. But with bacteria. I'm going to fight bacteria with poop, which yeah. is made of bacteria. Right. <laughs> the other thought was, or the other relation to excrements was clean urine was not only used to drink, it was also used to bathe in. There was actually legitimate businesses that sold clean urine baths. So you just like, yeah, my job is to drink a lot of water. Yep. <laughs> and then pee into this bottle. Yep. This sounds like some kind of e-girl. Well, e-girl it was business. like, as it is with every episode of Smorgasbord, maybe it was the virgin boy eggs. <laughs> <laughs> That's how they collected the but pee. Of course. But of course. <laughs> they could do it for eggs. They could do it for the <laughs> for, plague. For the plague. Into the bucket you go. <laughs> yeah, you, need a, you need a DM, the excrement of a virgin boy. A, ba- a bathing of 24 like, virgins. It's like all our virgin boys died. <laughs> uh, there were also some nonsense cures. So one of it was thinking positively. Oh. Because they thought it was like... bad vibes that was causing the plague. Thinking positively mm. could help. Good vibes only. Yeah. There are also some religious cures, so flagellation was one. That's the one when you whack yourself. Yeah, give yourself more wounds. That's yeah. that's what you need. Definitely <laughs> caused more spreading. <laughs> um, so the church kind of tried to nix, nix that right away, but the, it was too late. Everyone was doing it already. 
Are There's also buying amulets so cool. or charms, buying that Jesus thing for twenty ninety nine, twenty ninety nine, and <laughs> three payments of nine. <laughs> three payments, but like it's every three hours because the death rate's about two days. <laughs> <laughs> Can't you just take one from a dead person? I guess that's like rude. <laughs> Maybe you know, one of those. I guess it didn't work. <laughs> Fasting and prayer. And at some point, the Pope had to command the people, yeah, to stop flagellating because... It's everywhere. <laughs> this sounds so funny. Just stop flagellating, man. <laughs> you flagellated enough, okay? <laughs> you flagellated <laughs> enough, <laughs> young man. <laughs> As punishment, no more flagellating. <laughs> there are also some interesting... Um, I, I categorize them as philosophical thinkings that happen to prevent the plague for the rich. It's the idea of like eating and drinking in moderation, adding aromatic herbs to beverages, refraining from interacting with the poor, or even avoiding lechery and lustfulness. So these kind of like religious slash philosophical ideas came to rise apparently around this time. Maybe not came to rise necessarily, but became popular around this time. Mm. Another version that, of cures that they had were, well, I guess it's not really a cure, but for the rich, instead of finding a cure, they just leave <laughs> the infected areas. Bye. And it was, yeah, I mean, it that's was harder for the poor to do that because they didn't have their beach house in Santa Monica, oh, Santa Barbara, God. or in LA has the beaches. You're right on both counts. <laughs> ah, okay, cool. Malibu, Malibu is another yeah. good choice. Laguna Florida. Beach. Florida is not in California. <laughs> uh, yeah. I was just thinking of beaches at that point. Uh, beach house in Mexico. Another thing that came out of the plague, which is kind of more unfortunate, was the oppression towards marginalized groups. Surprise, surprise. Oh, nothing has changed, I nope. see. But the people they persecuted were different back then. They were mostly the Jews, the cripples, or anyone who stood out. If you're different, you probably caused the plague. The reason they thought the Jews did it is because they thought that they were poisoning the waters. So they thought that the plague traveled by water, which I guess is also why people avoided bathing <laughs> or drinking water. <laughs> <laughs> and they, a lot of Jews and a lot of marginalized groups were killed and tortured to tell the truth in quotation the marks. The truth. <laughs> Truthiness. Yeah. When it comes to the cures that worked... Oh yeah, there's none. No <laughs> surprise. To the surprise of no one. The one true way that really worked for to prevent the plague back then was really just avoiding the sick or quarantining. Imagine that. Imagine mm -hmm. that. <clears throat> In fact, the term quarantine was born during this time. It was actually from the port of Ragusa, which was modern-day Croatia. It was a Venetian port back then. The during the plague imposed a 30-day isolation on arriving ships, which eventually extended to 40 days, or what was called quarantino. That's a that's a lot of number of days. Yeah. Well, yeah, I imagine people mm -hmm. can't even deal with two weeks right now. This is a month and a half. Yeah. Oof. Yeah. Different time. People were stronger mm -hmm. back then. <laughs> they were less distracted, maybe. Yeah. Right. So they would, you'd be in a boat for 40 days, essentially, is mm -hmm. what it is. But uh, just like today, nobody followed it. And especially the rich didn't want to follow it. And it caused it to spread more. <laughs> hmm. Hmm. I'm going to get really close to this microphone and say, hmm. Hmm. <laughs> but also, even if there was this awareness of quarantining worked, governments back then were also slow at implementing these policies. Some things don't change. Mm, no, not at all. Pandemics still handled the same way. Um, but there were also some, the, but there were some places that did enforce these very strictly. So I guess your version of New Zealand back then would be Milan, who really made it law right away and strictly enforced it, even creating pest houses where plague victims can gather so that they could be tended to and, you know, oh, try I to thought, recover. I thought you were going to say so they can be killed. <laughs> no, they they bunched, they bunched, combined everybody together to prevent the spread and then tried to help. Mm. 
I don't know who was helping them at that point. So yeah, that was really the only thing that kind of worked was just staying away from people. Social so, strange, strange how that works. Yeah, so weird. Never, never thought that that would be a thing. Yeah, hmm. but this plague, so it ran from I think in Europe it was from 1347 to about 1353. After that, it was a lot of quarantining and people just getting their shit together. So as you can see, this pandemic can go for that long if we don't just get stuff. Just do the thing. <laughs> just behave for hey, like listen, a few weeks. Hey, listen, we've invented something else now. If people will just do it. <laughs> right. It's called vaccination. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe this was a good time to do this episode. <laughs> we'll just name it the cures for the plague or get just vaccinated get vaccinated <laughs> the end yeah nowadays that it really is it get treated get prevented that's the only way you could protect yourself from the plague even although it did end in 1950 1353 there were many reoccurrences uh, all the way until 1400 so 1361 1369 1374 1390 1400 were all recurrences of the Black Death coming back. It's like Fast and Furious. They just <laughs> keep making more. Like, hey, I'm back. Hey, hey, guys. Hey. Remember me? Miss me? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I was out in the other worlds. <laughs> Mercury? Oh, damn fine. No one left there. <laughs> Mercury is now in retrograde. <laughs> I'm back. You know, retrograde in French is... <laughs> pandemic. <laughs> <laughs> when it comes to the Black Death today, the plague itself and the bacteria still exists. Uh, there's about a thousand to three thousand plagues cases every year. It's not as much as back in the day. And I think a big part of it is you get sick fast, you get treated fast, the infection and the spread doesn't happen as big. It's all though like science. Yeah. Can cure things. Weird. <laughs> uh, and as we do with every episode, is it healthy or is it good? Is it healthy eating pus? I'm going to pass on that one. Yeah. <laughs> if it's good, I don't think any of those Kira's tasted or looked good. <laughs> I can't even imagine a chicken butt on my skin. So. Oh. Yeah. I would just want to tie a chicken, a, a naked chicken on someone <laughs> just for fun. <laughs> See if it works. Maybe like, oh, you're feeling a little down here. Let me just wrap up. <laughs> butthole. Can we tie to them you. some to the, to some anti vaxxers <laughs> Just like, if you don't believe in science, I bet you believe in chicken. <laughs> yeah. You know what people like you did back then? <laughs> Strap chickens. Let up me your teach ass. you the ways. <laughs> um, no. So our next episode, it's going to be an interesting one. I think we're going to do one on potatoes. Angel like, wrote a song. I I can't take all the writing credit. I had a good bass to work from. Yeah. So and I don't mean the instrument bass. I mean like... The song it's based on. Bass. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so we'll see if we can get someone to perform for us the potato song. The potato Angel song. <laughs> it's the, beautiful. I, I don't know. We'll find something about potatoes. Maybe weird... Potato uses. Potato art. <laughs> what do you think would be the weirdest use of potato? Shoving it up. <laughs> Tying Bumbos it to treatment. your boobos. <laughs> <laughs> Tying it to a chicken. Potato flavored boba. <laughs> Is it potato flavored boobos? I don't think so. Potato flavored boobos. <laughs> yeah. No thank you. So that's our episode. I laughed way too hard. Have a, we spent 20 minutes laughing. Yeah, we did, I think. Okay, bye. Yeah, bye. This, this is Smorgasbord. Board. This show was created by Angel Lynn and Mick Narciso. Hosted by Angel Lynn and Mick Narciso. Edited by Mick Narciso and Bianca Goico. Logo and graphics by Angel Lynn. Music by Mick Narciso and videography by Bianca Goico.